and welcome to the channel. I'm Lexicon, and today I want to take another look at the absolute mountain of suggestions I got in the OC submission form. Seriously, I was worried there wouldn't be enough the first time around. There's so much variety, and everyone's art looks so cute. It was so hard to just pick a few, but eventually, with a lot of second and third opinions, I narrowed it reluctantly down. So let's take a look at the gorgeous OCs for this video. Don't worry, I'll keep this part brief. You've already seen the first video, or at least I hope you have, so I won't over-explain anything. If you want to go back and hear it all, I'll link the previous video above. Basically, this is not equivalent to a commission. It's my quick interpretation of an image, and while I do try to get it as accurate as possible, there's no guarantee it'll match exactly. Everyone gets a bust, meaning head and shoulders, and these are not finished or polished pieces, just quick, cute pictures. With that out of the way, we can start. First up, we have a character named Mary from Creator Foxy. This is one of the older submissions which I wanted to give slight priority to, and they also looked really interesting. I don't know why I've attracted such a furry audience, but I mean, hey, I'll take it. Mary was even more fun to draw than I thought they'd be. They're very detail-dense and have a lot of different materials on their design, from the fur texture to the horns and jewelry, and I never had to spend too long texturing just one thing. They did have a lot of hair, of course, because, well, furry, but the monotony is broken by their shorter fur and longer… hair? Mane? Whatever you would call it on a demon deer. Drawing their face was also pretty fun. It was a lot of shapes and proportions that I'm not used to, especially the giant doe eyes and extended snout. The colors are nice as well. While there are a lot of them, if you handle the saturation well enough, they can all go together pretty nicely. I had a lot of fun with the jewelry, too. Now that I'm looking at it, I think I got the wrong idea about their crown shape, but it came out looking okay anyway, in my opinion. It was fun to interpret what I saw and add some extra details or figure out what some of the shapes were supposed to be. I thought about doing a chain necklace at first, but then I got the idea to do these little gold bar looking things that make the necklace look more regal in a way. Mary's design works really nicely for someone like me who loves drawing shiny stuff. I love doing the detailing on her horns and all her jewelry, and I absolutely love drawing gems, so I may have spent a little longer than necessary on her necklace and crown. Her overall design goes together a lot better than you'd think with all the myriad elements going on. No matter where you look, there's something cool to look at. Finally, with the last touches, I gave Mary a light blue background to match Foxy's favorite color, with a little tinge of magenta to help it jive better with the foreground. I also added some magic sparkles and a white stroke outline to help them pop. And there we go! That's Mary. Next up is a character named Kenji Fukumoto? I'm sorry. <laughs> from creator Connie. This character comes from a previous commissioner of mine, so shout out to her. It was so nice to look through one of your characters again. You have such good reference images and it's always fun. Kenji was a breath of fresh air, to be completely honest. I absolutely love drawing wacky fantasy beings. That's like my whole thing, whether for myself or for other people. But I rarely just draw a regular old human. He was especially fun, too, and easy considering his reference photo had the base color palette laid out for me for easy color picking. While I did desaturate them somewhat, I tried to stay as true to the provided palette as possible, and while it was a little outside my comfort range with saturation, it ended up looking very bright and colorful, and I'm glad it was offered up. I don't usually draw men, or demi-men, so it was a little bit of a challenge, but not nearly as much as I thought it would be. His shape, language, and proportions came easily to me. They're a friendly, upbeat guy with a little bit of roundness to them, so I stuck to round, friendly shapes and kept in mind the extra fluff to his face when drawing his expression. This is what I meant in the last video when I said sometimes too much symmetry can mess you up. I had to go back and erase part of my sketch for the face so I could make it squish in just the right way, otherwise the expression might have looked flat and not as impactful. 
I also decided to make him wink because his bio says that he has a habit of jokingly flirting with people, and he's just all around a silly person. I also gave him some lopsided, scruffy facial hair to match that character trait, which I think is hilarious, by the way, and made sure to give him my best attempt at some mixed Japanese and white features. I've been trying my best to break away from the same face syndrome, and I think I've been improving at it a lot. He's definitely got his own set of features, and I love how he came out. I hope you guys do too. When it came time for finishing up, I gave him a, a yellow background and a little star emote for his flirty wink. Connie says her favorite color is purple, but requested that I use Kenji's instead to make it go better together. So that's what I did, and he looks fabulous. Third is a cute little character by a name I have no idea how to pronounce. <laughs> I'm sorry. My best attempt is Venetia Sinclair. So I hope that's right. Anyways, she comes from Creator Ray on Instagram and she's freaking adorable. Venetia Venetia. Um, her whole aesthetic is just so cute. I know from the submission that she's supposed to be a very creepy character, but just look at her. I love her hair, her outfit, and her little freckles. I kept her face slim but cute with a little bit of a youthful roundness to it with big eyes and neat bangs that reach over her eyebrows and a small smiling mouth. She seemed pretty symmetrical in the reference photo, but I tried to make little details and make them more asymmetrical, like the cut of her bangs and the way her hair lays before it's pulled into her braids. Speaking of the braids, I wasn't totally sure what they were supposed to be. They could just be hair twists or frizzy untied hair, but I decided to go with braids because they looked cute to me. Her color palette was nice too. It's not as busy as the ones I've seen before and they all fall into my personally preferred realm of desaturated jewel tones. It's all very chill. It's all very soft and girlish without looking over the top or loud and it complements her aesthetic well. It also makes her eyes pop, as they're both distinctly different colors from the rest of the drawing, and it plays well with cool shadows. Like before, I finished her off with a white outline stroke and a simple background this time. Well, it started as indigo, but the other colors used to balance it out kind of drowned it out now that I'm looking at it. Still, I think it ended up looking really nice. I hope you all think so. Fourth and last of all, we have, I want to say her name is Supa. She's from creator Supa Chick, and she grabbed my attention with the simple but effective design, minimal color palette, and the inclusion of cyan, which I don't know if you could tell is like one of my favorite colors. I wasn't sure what to do with her hair at first. I just started sketching out the vague shape along with what little we could see of her face and figured I could decide what to do from there. Line art for this one didn't take very long to, due to the lack of hair locks to detail and the sparseness of overall elements, but what was there was very effectively done, as I said earlier. She has no visible mouth, only a nose and a single eye, but the limited face is put to good use. She has a thick stream of what looks like black tears that fill white space, and then her hair is duotone, which makes for a much more interesting shape to look at. I considered just doing a gradient on her hair at first, like in the original, then decided that since the background was going to be pink anyway, and since it seemed like that might have been the case in the original too, now that I'm looking at it, her hair was going to be transparent and reflective, like a bubble. It was by far the most frustrating thing I've decided to do today, but also one of the most rewarding. I love how the colors and everything come out at the end, even if it's a bit of a trust the process moment. Shading was easy to make up for the hair frustrations. All her shapes were simple and large, and they cast very obvious shadows that are pleasing to look at. Much the same goes for the lighting and bounce light too. This entire drawing was very pleasant and relaxing to work on once I figured out how to make the hair look like a silly putty bubble, and I found myself really enjoying it. The transparent nature of her hair made a stroke outline impossible, unfortunately, but I think she looks fine without it anyway. I chose a background that wouldn't cover her entire form on purpose, so that some of her hair would overlap with the black backdrop and make it obvious to the viewer that you're seeing through the, all the big bubble shapes. That's what really made the idea come to life, and it was very rewarding to put together at the end. 
So yeah, they're super. So there you have it, all four of the lucky OCs for this video. How did I do? Who's your favorite? Let me know in the comments. And if you're still waiting, I'd absolutely love to do another one of these, so keep watching and engaging. This time, I went back and forth between like goals. I don't want to go too high and ask for too much, but I think 150 likes is a reasonable request. Until then, I'm going to work on my new Danny Phantom series and see if I can get it off the ground. And I have some interesting ads up my sleeve for a new redesigning YouTube ads video, so stay posted for those. If you want to see more art I do for myself, or art for older videos, I occasionally post to my Instagram under the same name. Drop by and see if that's something you want to follow. As always, thank you so much for watching, especially all the way to the end. If you had fun here today, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. A second of your time helps more than you know, and I'm grateful for everyone. With that said, I'm Lexicon, and I'll see you next time.